Hey guys, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I know it's been a couple weeks now since I posted a lesson, but I uh, used the time last week to post a couple clips. One of a solo over my song right about now, the end solo of that, and then a little cover of Little Wing. So I was staying busy, still here in uh, coronavirus quarantine in Boston. For April 18th, it was definitely a weird day today. We actually got snow here, so on top of uh, everything else going on, a super late snowfall. But anyways, wanted to get on here and do a little lesson on the other, I'd say, most requested thing, other than I know the last lesson I did was some of those uh, cascading pentatonic lines. But I've had a lot of requests for me to talk some about how I look at vibrato. So, uh, Vibrato has always been something that was really important to me. I started playing violin around the time I was three or four. And in that world, it's very kind of accepted and just taught that there's a certain way to do vibrato and that it's very important to have a good vibrato. I think a lot of guitar players uh, can fall into the trap of chasing licks and speed and all that. And then some of the more subtle things on the instrument get left by the wayside. So that would include vibrato, super accurate bends, just touch in general. But we'll dive a bit into vibrato right now. So as you may have noticed if you've been following me, I never use uh, the whammy bar, trem bar. So this is going to totally focus on left hand vibrato. And there are two sides of it. There's the technique side of what is actually happening physically with the hand. And then there's also just the taste side and learning how to identify a great vibrato and then replicate that yourself, as well as be able to tailor your vibrato for, for different situations. So first off, how I look at the technique side, if you've seen some videos of mine other places, this might be somewhat of a repeat, but I look at it as a uh, almost like the royal wave motion with the left hand, where if I'm, say, playing a note right here, I'll play ninth fret on the G string with my first finger. All I'm doing is I'm locking the side of my hand there right on to the side of the guitar. I'm using the thumb for control. And then I'm just turning my whole forearm like that side to side. And that's really the motion. I'm just pulling the string with the finger. I'm not letting it move. But none of the motion for me is coming from the fingers coming in or out. I find it really important to do it with the biggest muscles possible so that you have real control over it. And also, if you're playing a long gig, you're not going to get worn down nearly as quickly as if you're using your fingers and those are getting tired. So it's that same motion no matter what finger we're using. If I use my third finger, it's still the first fingers behind kind of clamping on the side of the neck there on the side. It's not super firm, but it's there enough to where when I move it back and forth, the whole hand's moving because it's that forearm turning. Now, I can take my thumb off, still have it happen. But when I take the thumb off, I lose a lot of the control that I have. So the thumb is there, and we'll get more into how this applies later, but the thumb is really providing the control for the vibrato, letting me vary the, uh, the speed and width, which are the two things we have to deal with here. So I'd encourage you to just, first of all, if this is all new to you, get that motion and feeling and kind of muscle memory under your fingers where that's comfortable to come in and out of the vibrato. Uh, I use all four of my fingers. I mean, I'd say most of the time, if it's a note I know I'm going to be hanging on for a while, I'm going to try to get to either the first finger or the third finger because those tend to be the strongest for it, but can do it with any. Another quick thing for right-handed guitar players who play this way, so there are a few exceptions to this, Albert King, Eric Gales, anyone who's playing upside down and not restrung. Uh, one of the hardest notes for us right-handed guitar players who play strung the traditional way is first finger vibrato on the high E string. It's something I've worked really, really hard on, but depending what string you're on, you're going to either have to move the string going up or going down. 
Generally going down is going to be the preferred way of doing it. It's just, it's a stronger feeling since it's closer to the hand kind of grabbing something and less pushing away. Uh, so the first finger on the E string, of course, if you have any motion down, you're just gonna do this and pull the string off the fretboard. So you have to be very, very careful there to only be moving the string up. That can be a little tricky, something that takes a while to make it sound good. So often, if I'm playing, say here, the uh, C minor pentatonic scale, and I know I have to land on the C right there on the E string, if I can get to it and I know I want to use vibrato on the note, I'll often try to actually shift up to where I, instead of hitting that note at the 8th fret of E, I'm hitting it at the 13th fret of the B. Since I can much easier, although there I did pull it off a little bit, but much easier to use a, a, a better vibrato up there. That's a better one. But uh, just provides me with more control and I don't run into the scenario where I'm pulling the string off the neck. So that pretty much covers the general technique, the way I look at it. Then we have the most important side of it, because at the end of the day, I find that this technique is the best way to accomplish it, but it's definitely not the only way. Any way that's going to get you the sound that you hear in your head will work. But the most important thing you can do is first off, identify players with great vibratos. So for me, Great blues vibrato, Stevie Ray Vaughan, probably top of the list. Just incredible control, uh, incredible tone to the vibrato. I mean, the notes always sound really good. B.B. Uh, King, of course, Albert King, all have a really unique flavor. Vibrato can totally give you your unique sound because it kind of puts your stamp on the note. So when you're trying to replicate some of these vibratos, it's really, really hard to be playing and also analyzing and listening to your playing at the same time. So what I did a lot of, still do, record yourself. Doesn't have to be into a computer program or anything. It can be the audio notes or even better, video like this, just on your phone. And listen back to it and really listen for if it sounds like you want to and if it also sounds good. I look at all of this like I'm trying to be a singer through the instrument, just like a singer would use vibrato on note where there's that knowing when to use it, when to maybe not use it too can be just as important. And then we really have two different things that we're adjusting with changing our vibrato because we don't want the same type of sound over a slow blues as we would over a shuffle. And this applies to any style. But we have width, so how wide the vibrato is, and then we have speed. And I look at it like two dimmer switches, where instead of just having an on-off for each of those, we can have either of them at any level, and it's the combination of them that'll make the sound. The first step is to be able to have one vibrato that just sounds good and pleasing and works. But the next step and really what separates great, great players is you do get to that point where you can tailor the vibrato exactly to whatever the song you're playing or even the section or moment of the song. You might use four different vibratos during one solo and that'll help bring out the character of different sections, really build it. Uh, so I hope this has given you some good stuff to think about. Uh, as it goes with vibrato, and please leave some uh, comments on what you'd like to see next. Also, be sure to subscribe for more content, and I'll see you next time here on YouTube.